Hello, everybody. It's 1 p.m. and for a brand new Facebook session for you guys. Our topic for today is making and smooth. Dr. P, over to you. Everyone, and thank you for joining us on this fine Wednesday afternoon. Uh, super excited today. Um, our topic today is protein. Uh, uh, and finding the right protein in this gen age, how much protein should I eat? Uh, what are the different sources of protein, meat and beyond? Um, how to have a balance, balance my meal and blood sugars uh, if I cannot have meat? Um, and then finally, how to make beans and lentils delicious? Um, I'm all into tasty food and I could answer these questions, but I have a much better option for you today. So I bring to you uh, Ms. Madhu Gadia. She is a registered uh, dietitian as well as a certified diabetes educator. Um, she has a passion for uh, cooking, especially Indian cooking. She has an Indian cookbook. She has a website. Um, and above all, uh, she's a firm believer, just like I am, that healthy and tasty foods go hand in hand. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Madhu Gadia. Take it away, Madhu. Uh, Dr. B, there seems to have been some technical issue. Um, I think we're waiting for Madhu to join. I just trying to get in touch with her. Um, in the meanwhile, would you like to speak to um, Jamie about what are your protein choices? Give me a about what, sorry? What are your protein choices? Okay. All right. So um, this is a debate. Uh, you know, I, uh, I do eat meat and my philosophy about eating meat is this. Uh, and when my patient asks which meat, I say anything that used to swim or fly is a much better meat in general than things that did not or animals that did not. Um, uh, but again, I, I think I have to know and uh, understand that it, there are a lot of people who love meat. I've never had a steak, so I don't know how that is. But we'll hear from Jamie, who's our uh, PharmD, the expert um, uh, on uh, protein and meat. So, Jamie, what's your take on meat uh, and what's your favorite source of protein? Yeah, so I eat meat most days. I'm a typical Midwest girl, born and raised in the Midwest. I've lived in three different states, all in the Midwest. And so I eat meat every single day. Um, in terms of my favorite, I would have to say a good old healthy steak. I don't eat steak every day, um, but I am very careful in the products that I buy. Um, I actually buy the cow directly from a farmer. And this year we're investigating and in trying to buy a pig directly from the farmer. So I'm trying to cut out the middle man and cut out the processing. So very, very clean meats is what I would, what I believe in. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. I think Madhu has joined us back. So let's take it back to Madhu. Madhu, I introduce, I praise all the singing and songs about your cooking. And I, I failed to mention, I have a cooking handicap. And today my cooking handicap is going to get better with expert guidance from Madhu. So Madhu, take it away. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bhargav. Um, sorry for the mix up here but um thank you for having me and you know with the pandemic we are all concerned about our health probably more so and is if we have if you have diabetes you have to be further vigilant about taking care of yourself now whether there is a meat shortage or not meat shortage um that you should know where the alternate protein is also coming from. It's always good to mix it up. Plant-based proteins or, or plant-based foods have shown to improve your glycemic control, um, reduce insulin resistance, and uh, could improve your blood sugar by as much as 30%. So it's a, a good way to... Um, take care of your diabetes now and Madhu, I might that, you on that. Uh, sorry for interrupting so it's such early in the game i think this is an important point uh, what you're stating is plant-based nutrition or plant-based meat may have a beneficial impact on diabetes and sugars so uh, can you tell us about any data or evidence on that uh, that we can share with our audience today Yes, there was a NIH uh, funded study that indicated that people who ate 
primarily plant-based uh, foods, which are which include um, whole grains, vegetables, fruits, um, beans, legumes, as well as nuts, have a better. Um, they have lower glycemic index. I mean, it, which has a lower the the diet has a lower glycemic index, right. and therefore better absorption and better blood sugar control. We'll share that link with you guys in the um, in our Facebook uh, page, so you can also review it. Back to you, Madhu. Okay, so in order for you, uh, now I know that can be a huge leap. Um, we're not asking that you. We're just only suggesting, but one of the things is that you don't have to become a vegetarian or a vegan. You know, have you heard of the programs called Flexitarian or Meatless Monday programs? These are all designed to help you find ways to increase your plant-based foods or plant foods so you can get good quality protein as well as fiber and other nutrients. As a country, um, as well as around the world, we have become protein obsessed. How much protein do you really need? You need basically 0.3, uh, 6 grams of protein per, um, per pound of body weight. So if you're 180 pounds, you need um, 50, 65 grams of protein. And if you are a 150 pound person, you need 54 grams of protein. So that's all the protein you need. That said, well, where's the protein when it comes to plant-based foods? And so we're gonna show you a chart, which is gonna show you where the protein is. So starches, one serving of starch has three grams of protein, and beans, lentils, pulses, legumes, tofu, has six grams of protein. And uh, you can see the carbohydrates and fat as well. But the protein is where we're focused. And vegetables have two grams also. So your carrots and beans are also have protein. Uh, nuts, almonds, pistachios, and uh, peanuts uh, are very fine. Protein, um, one ounce. Uh, which I'm going to show you in a minute, actually, so we can finish the chart. Uh, okay, and have uh, six grams of protein. Milk and cheese have eight grams of protein per ounce or per serving, and eggs have eight, eight grams per serving. Whereas meat, chicken, fish all have about eight grams of protein per ounce. And so that's where your protein is. As you can see, there's a lot of protein in other foods or plant-based foods. So I'm gonna show you a couple of foods that kind of give you an idea where the protein is coming from. So here we go. We have an ounce of um, nuts, okay? Which we said was six grams of protein. And that's about, um, it fits in your palm of your hand. Now they're high in calories, so you don't want to eat a lot of them. Definitely never more than that uh, in a day. But you know, just adding a few of these on your salads or just munching on them is a great way to um, not only get protein, but I'd say even balance your blood sugars. They're great. Um, another thing I want to show you is here's a um, of um, Garbanzo beans, which I want to say, of course, these aren't garbanzo beans, these are black. Um, canned beans are a great source of easy to cook uh, beans, okay? And here's a cup, and that's like 12 grams of protein, okay? And that, once, even when you cook it, put a little sauce in it, it's still going to be a nice, very filling bowl of protein and food, okay? And another thing I wanted to show you was yogurt. Here's plain yogurt. This is not Greek yogurt. A cup of yogurt, a cup of milk are all also eight grams of protein. And these are all uh, proteins you're uh, familiar with, whereas the beans and others you want to start increasing more of. By the way, I have a question. Um, yeah. 
a couple of questions. So thank you for sharing those visuals. Very, very powerful. Uh, one thing, uh, milk, uh, whether it's uh, the skim or full 2%, 1%, uh, the protein amount is the same in those, or does that also go down with the percentage of fat? No, actually the protein is exactly the same. Skim to whole milk is the only difference is the fat content. And the fat is saturated, so I would say definitely skim 1% you know, for your heart as well as for your um, health in general, you want to stick to lower saturated fat. Great. Uh, second thing I want to say, two weeks ago, we had one of our other passionate dietitians uh, come on board and she showed us the pantry party. And one of the things I learned from her, uh, there's a lot of salt in these canned foods. She said, either find a lower salt version or wash them so you can reduce the salt. Many patients with diabetes have high blood pressure. So just important to keep that in mind as well. Yes. Yeah, I'm learning I'm from two great dietitians. How about that? Right, right. Well, I um, either buy the low salt sodium or I literally rinse my all my beans before I, I don't even like that liquid that it's in. So it's kind of a culinary thing as much as it's um, it's a sodium thing. So definitely, thank you for telling me, you know, reminding and finally, me. Finally, uh, Kathy would like that chart. Uh, so can we share that on the Facebook, uh, the chart you were sharing? Yes. Uh, the yeah. Excellent, thank you. Back to you. Okay, now one of the things is you wanna balance your uh, blood sugar. Can you balance your blood sugars without meat? That's a big question that uh, is um, in on everybody's mind these days and probably more so than ever. But you have to remember our diets haven't changed. We still want 50% of our diet to come from carbohydrate, 20% from protein and 30% from fat. So balance your diets and these diets can be from vegetarian sources. So how you get the fats and how you get the protein, it's the balance is still important. And again, um, I'll recite the NIH study which indicated that plant-based proteins and foods overall were very healthy and good for the blood sugar, good for diabetes. So you're in good uh, shape with that. So, I have a question for you, uh, another question. Um, so you talked about half of our calories coming from carbohydrates and so forth. And now you know that there's so many of these low carb diets out there, high protein, yeah. low carb diet. Um, of course, I have a take on that, but I'm more curious first to hear, what's your take on high protein, low carb diet in the context of diabetes? You know, um, I know it's kind of one of those things that it's hard to, um hard to stand your ground with the fact that you need 50 percent of your calories coming from carb because people have become so protein obsessed and carb phobic if you would say but the thing that i would tell you is to check your blood sugar because the studies clearly indicate that about eating more fiber eating more uh, plant foods and managing with a good balanced diet works just as well uh, as a high protein diet plus remember excess protein is always going to be break you can't absorb extra protein it's going to be broken down and um for energy and if that's the case then you're just putting your kidney and liver on and making it work harder. So we think of course. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And I, I think this is a question I face all the time. Uh, hey, I want to go on a keto diet. I want to go on Atkins. I want to go on this new diet. Everybody wants to go on a high protein diet. So what do I tell them? Well, one thing is uh, if you have diabetes, make sure your doctor knows about this. Absolutely critical. Um, make this decision with full knowledge of your uh, provider. Um, especially so if you're taking medicines that cause low sugar reactions. What are those medicines? Insulins and the medicines called sulfonylureas, which start with glipizide, glyburide, glimipiride. If you are on those and you go on a low, uh, low carb, high protein diet, you'll start having significant hypoglycemia. That could be dangerous. So if you do this, always let your doctor know. The second thing I say is I've seen remarkable results in the sugars from even the um, 
low carb high protein diet in the short run my problem is almost everybody rebounds from them and then first i'm chasing them down this way and then i'm chasing them back the other way my rule of thumb for nutrition is make pleasant lifestyle changes that can last a lifetime so uh, that's my take on high protein diet um and madhu back to you so this kind of leads me into the second phase of our third topic which is um which is how to make food and being uh, how to make beans delicious and tasty okay that kind of goes to what you just said if you don't like the food you're not going to stick with it that's that's a primary basis of all diet every diet will work for a short time it has been shown repeatedly but what will you stick with okay that's another reason i would say you know go with foods you're familiar with balance your blood sugars add one thing at a time and try different things so because we already know about all the other foods the the cheeses the milk the nuts how to use them i want to talk a little bit about beans now beans is a great source of protein you don't want to um ignore them or just say i don't eat them i want you to i want to test i want you to test yourself and see how you can make it tastier now if it doesn't taste good i know you're not going to eat it study after study has shown taste always trumps nutrition yeah my heart says i want to eat healthy food or i should healthy food i should eat healthy food my brain says i should eat healthy food but if it doesn't taste good i'm not going to stick to it that said today you're probably eating variety of foods that you never tasted before like hummus and and uh, adamami or something that you were not familiar with so you've already incorporated some great um yeah plants that you just eat because they're in style so i would like to, you to really try the beans now beans start with things you're familiar with bean soups bean chilies um hummus uh, and then since i am um my forte is indian food i want to talk a little bit about indian food 50% of the indians are vegetarians or up to 50% i think it's somewhere between 30, 40 and 50% that's a half a billion people plus so what what do they say um necessity is the mother of invention so we have a ton of food a ton of delicious dishes that are seasoned with spices and herbs that bring out the flavor of the beans and beans can be used in so many ways not just salads not just um you know boring plain ones try out uh, spices spices add another layer of antioxidants to your diet they also increase digestibility of the beans and um it's so again i would go with the um, you could go to my website cuisineofindia.com and you can see a lot of recipes they're also going to share some of the three recipes that i have shared with them that are all primarily beans and um so i would i would start with that so this brings me to um, a question that i have actually for all three experts that we have on the panel today plus our audience um i'd like to know what is your most favorite source of protein other than meat so madhu let's start with you what's your favorite source of protein other than meat beans carbs or beans <laughs> All right, and I would ask the same question to the audience. Please type in uh, what what is your favorite uh, um, source of protein. So please type in into the box as well. Jimmy, you go next, and I actually found a picture to show my favorite protein, and I'll share it yeah. momentarily. Um. So here's my question: Do eggs count? Oh yeah. Eggs count? Sure. Yeah, that would be that would be my that would be my source. So Jamie to that I'm going to say the incredible egg and the incredible beans are actually quite similar. 
they can be used in so many different ways. All right, and my my favorite, first of all, egg is a big deal. Uh, my father was on peritoneal dialysis, so and he was a true vegetarian. He would never touch meat. So at least he was willing to eat egg. So egg was a big lifesaver for us to get six grams or eight grams of protein and very easily digestible and can be put in multiple things. All right, now my favorite source of protein, I just made it on Mother's Day. So here I am cooking um, on Mother's Day. These are flowers from our garden, and this is where I'm marinating this thing called paneer. Paneer is a product in India made out of uh, uh, milk. Um, and so uh, paneer, and we just marinated it. And this is what I served. Uh, this is my plate with the, the tomatoes also. I always like to grill those. And this is my wife's plate uh, that evening. So some paneer kebab. That was my favorite. That is my totally favorite uh, source of protein. Try it. And I'm eating lentils, by the way. I can eat lentils all day long. I mean, uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I'm a huge fan of lentils, legumes, etc. Beans I don't do as well, but uh, lentils, big deal. I like all of them. Um, by lentils, he's talking about legumes and um, that are um, what we call pulses in India. And we cook them in so many varieties of ways. Again, I'll refer you to a recipe called dal fry which is the yellow dal that you see in a in indian restaurant so um yeah those are that's a staple for vegetarians in india at least so all right this is uh this is really good okay um uh, moving on so uh, do you want to talk about how you can balance a meal and blood sugar with like without meat because uh, that, that's one topic i think a lot of our audience would uh, be keen to know about okay to balance okay go ahead dr Barbara. no okay to balance yes. a meal um and remember that vegetarian oh sorry uh, plant-based foods are um, have more fiber in them. Mm -hmm. So this is where it helps to uh, balance your um, blood sugar because it has a lower digestibility. So if you wanted to balance a meal, here I'm gonna give you an example. Get um, two slices of bread, okay? And that just put butter on them or margarine, whatever you choose or maybe dip it in oil and uh, put a cup of beans on a salad or you know just to start out to check it out or even a half a cup of beans in and two cups of um, lettuce or mixture of lettuce and spinach uh, put some nuts on it i'm just going to add a bunch of nuts on it that's going to be another extra crunch um, and some salad dressings don't forget to season your beans and check out your blood sugar. Two hours after, you might be surprised. It's going to be filling. It's going to be um, yummy. It's going to be um, overall good for your heart, good for your uh, kidney, good for your uh, weight, even because it's lower in um, uh, lower in saturated fat. Another thing that you want to do is. Use some fats because fats also help um, bring your blood sugar in a level uh, because it's a slower absorbing um, uh, macronutrient. So a combination of carbohydrate, protein, foods, and fats is what's going to balance your blood sugar. And again, check your blood sugar two hours after a meal. Check it more than once to see if if what I'm saying works for you, because there's always individual variations. Mm -hmm. And um, you might find that, you know, one thing works for you and the other doesn't. And um, so this, this would be my recommendation to any patients. Great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, as we get closer towards the end of our conversation, uh, a couple of things. Uh, uh, Kathy mentions black beans mixed with farro is a very good uh, choice. Uh, farro has six grams of protein and then add a little bit of soy sauce. So that's cool. Um, thank that's you for that comment. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Maria, I think it's time to do our um, our uh, quiz of the day. Thank you for that. Yes.
Go for yes. it. Yep. So um, I think it's time for us to do this or that as well. Madhu, we've got something special prepared for you. Um, it's all about proteins here. Um, okay. So this or that, which has more protein, black beans or Greek yogurt? Actually, you'd be surprised uh, that they both have about the same amount of protein. The difference is um, one cup of black beans cooked and one cup of Greek yogurt. They both have um, uh, 15 grams to 17 grams of protein. Now, typically, a yogurt only has 8 grams of protein for a cup. But Greek yogurt is packed with, um, they strain the yogurt. There is more uh, non-fat dry milk they add to it to make it so thick. And therefore, it's double the, double the protein. But, and then black beans have uh, no saturated fat. Uh, and uh, they're high in fiber. Whereas Greek yogurt has minimal saturated fat because if it's non-fat. But you know the regular Greek yogurts have, have a comeback or all yogurts. Be careful of those uh, whole yogurts. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, the next one is uh, which is easier to cook? Whole lentils or pink lentils? Actually, lentils in general cook very fast. And lentils, the brown lentils, have the husk on them. And they will, they will cook on... Um, Let's say they'll cook in 20 minutes, uh, 20 to 30 minutes on the stove. And pink lentils will cook in half the time. So pink lentils are the same lentils as whole lentils. The difference is they're husked and they're split. So they cook twice as fast. I love pink you, lentils. Right behind you, I see something that you might use for uh, cooking lentils. Did you talk about that? It's one of my favorite things, uh, the uh, electric. Actually, the next uh, so we're going to wait. <laughs> All right. We're getting close to the end. So uh, I'll move on to the right? next one. Yep. Okay. Which is better for you, tofu or cheese? Both tofu and cheese. Again, don't like to say this, that don't eat this and don't eat that. That's just mm -hmm. not my, uh, I, I don't think that's it, ever a good idea. Every food fits into a, a healthy diet. So a third of a cup of tofu has um, about eight grams of protein, and so does a slice of chi uh, cheese. The, again, the difference is tofu is unsaturated fat, and cheese is saturated fat. Hmm. And the so when it comes to protein, both are good. Okay. All right. The last thing. We have here. Yep. Which is easiest to cook beans in? Is it a pot or an instant pot? What's your pick? Well, um, I have to have a pressure cooker, and in, all Indians own a pressure cooker. I think they own more than one pressure cooker. But pressure cooker has a there's a fear attached to pressure cooker. So now we've come up with this instant. We there's an emergence of instant pot, which has a pressure cooker option, and I love it because you can t put your beans in it, time it for eight to ten minutes, come back and it's done and i'll season it so um pot can take up to an hour to two hours cooking the same thing so yes definitely in invest Norway, in uh, our household has uh, two instant pots and four pressure cookers so yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're a pressure cooker. well i have to say i i it took me a while to start start and buy an instant pot because i have for pressure cookers, because all Indian families own a lot of pressure cooker. But I bought an instant pot, and now I bought one for each of my children. And they're enjoying it. So uh, there's a question. Have 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 them. They wouldn't use them, so now they use the instant pot. Okay, there's a question online. Can adding fats cause a higher blood sugar? I'll take that. Uh, in general, when you think of the three macronutrients, uh, carbs increase the blood sugar the fastest with the highest peak, the glycemic index we're talking about. Protein are next, a little bit slower over several hours. Uh, the fats make it even longer uh, in terms of the impact on sugars. So when you have mixed meals, you get a nice combination of different waves and your sugars don't rise as high. So I would urge you to think about each of your meals and use a combination of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. 
All right, uh, getting to the end. Um, let's do this. I just uh, want to add one thing to the fats. Try to stick to the unsaturated fats, which salad dressing has an unsaturated fat. Wherever there's oil and plant-based um, fats, nuts, those are all good fats versus saturated fats. Excellent. Well, let's bring the session home. Uh, unless Maria, you have something else. Uh, uh, Madhu, what are your key three take home points? The things you want our audience to remember uh, for the next few weeks and months to come. Okay, forever. Eat three meals a day. Do not skip meals. That's kind of my pet peeve. Um, the other one is try plant based um, diet, not diet. Try skipping meat once a week. You can go to Meatless Mondays. You can try out different diets. Don't invent anything. Um, but try out, try, and the third thing is try one bean um, recipe per, per week. Great. Well, yes. thank you, Madhu, for an excellent presentation. Uh, I learned a lot. I'm looking forward to consuming more of these lentils and uh, things in my diet. Um, all right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, we will join you the same time next week. Uh, the topic next week is blood sugars. Be the boss of your blood sugars. The things we'll talk about, uh, along with the Iowa farm girl, Jamie Pillick, is uh, things like uh, what are good blood sugars to target uh, for? When should I be checking? What's the best way of tracking? How do I control my blood sugars better? So if you have any of those questions, please join us next Wednesday um, at our topic, um, our Facebook Live, Be the Boss of Your Blood Sugars. Thank you so much for joining today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Madhu. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.